God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. So as I said, God created life. Anybody want to be ignorant and say that's not true? <laughs> God created life. But one of, the, one of the aspects that have really escaped us is that not only did God create life, he created all life. But then he chose women to be the vessels to bring his creation into the earth. Amen. And that's where we have lost it. Because we want to, you know, they, well, not us, the, the world wants to say that you don't, you could choose not to. No, you can't. You can't choose not to. You can choose not to lay down with a man. But God created the life. And as women, we are to, to yield to him and allow that life to come through. And come forth. Abortion does not have to do with reproduction rights. Let me just set that straight. Because right to me, abortion and rep reproduction don't belong in the same sentence. Contradicts each other. I'm going to kill this baby so I can reproduce when I want to. Not knowing that the action of killing it could totally destroy any reproduction things that you could have done. So what happens when we get into so many things that um, the world says without doing our own research and finding out the truth? You, got, you have to find out the truth. And we know about the truth. We realized when they tried to get us to get these shots and they, they tried to, they forced some people they threatened them with their jobs. Now they're coming forth and saying, oh, the mask didn't work. Oh, the, the, the shots didn't work. Oh. Some of us fell, up, fell for it because we didn't do our research. Some of us fell for it because we didn't follow the peace in our spirit. Some of us got away with getting the shots because we, were, we didn't know and we were at such a place of unlearning, uh, unlearned, that we fell up under if you eat any poisonous thing, it won't hurt you. Amen. Okay? But some of us have to do things now medically to make sure that we reverse what was done. Amen. And that is possible. You need to do your research on that if that's where you feel off. You're having all kinds of issues with your body because of the, the shots that you took or whatever, then you need to, you know who you need to find? You need to find the doctors that they shut up and go find out what they, they'll tell you what to do. Amen. They will tell you what to do to get your body acting right. Because the government, gov government can't do it at this point. Because they don't, they lost their ability to um, you know, do the, like they should have done the test that they normally do on everything else they offer you. And we understand that they will make mistakes and things will go through the, fall through the cracks and stuff like that, but you need to do what's necessary. Okay, so now let me, let me get into a mother's heart. Uh, before, and then thanks, thanks ladies for allowing God to use you in creation. Because that's why we're all here. Get over. Don't get. Don't be upset with your mom. Just you can't change anything that she did. You can't. But you are here. She did do something right. She birthed you. Amen. She birthed you so you can experience God's goodness. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about. Is is doing uh, a, a mother's heart or what a mother wants for her children. So we all want things for our children. Amen. Mothers, fathers, whatever. Mothers want things. Um, and since it's Mother's Day, we're talking about mothers today. So men, just hang on. 
a lot of what we want is based on how we are raised. That's why it's important to know the background of the person that you're going to marry. Because you're going to have to deal with it, and you should deal with it before you get married, before, then after. It's harder. Uh, so you need to, you know, and that's why we, in our premarital counseling, we encourage you to learn, out, learn about each other's background. Amen. You know, how you, brought, how you were brought up. Because you understand a, a person more when you understand their background. And you can make it a wiser choice. Today, I want to talk to you about some essential things we want our children to obtain in life. I'm not going to cover everything, but um, I am going to cover uh, some essential things that we want as mothers. Um, but before I do that, I probably going to say this at the end of the message also, but the most important thing you can do for your children is just to teach them the ways of God. Amen. You cannot depend on anybody else to do that. Teach them how to hear God. Teach them how to hear God's voice. Teach them how to obey God instantly. Teach them how to honor God. This, is, this one is very important because a lot of people don't do this part. Teach them how to accept God as their God. Because if you have a child that you raise up and they're ashamed to, as Bishop say, recognize that they're a Christian or even admit that they're a Christian, it's because they don't know God as their own God. Yeah. Amen. They don't know God as, God as their God. Amen. So we have to learn how to teach them to personalize with God. I mean, I, I mean there was a worship and praise song that they sung this morning, and I chose to sing it personalized. Yes. I think was how great was our, is our God? Is that did we sing that this morning? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I sung, "How great is my God? Yes. How great is my God? Sing with me. How great is my God? Yes. You have to personalize the Word of God. Yes. Teach your children that how to personalize the Word of God." Because as I have mentioned before, as you hear yourself say the word of God over yourself, you believe yourself faster than you believe anybody else. Amen. Amen. And if our children do not learn how to pray the word over themselves and confess the word over themselves, they won't learn how to know how to believe God. They won't know him as their personal savior, as their, as their whole, heavenly father. And they should, especially if you're a single parent. If you're a single mother, your baby should never, ever have to feel like they don't have a father. They have the ultimate father, the Father God. And that's what we should train them on. Hopefully we don't have as many as we have now, and it gets less than that because we do the right thing. You know, you, you cannot just fit in with the world and just offer your body to anybody because of peer pressure. You can't do that. That's against the word of God. And you're not going to be happy in it anyway because you're a Christian. See, we can't fit in with the world anymore. And you know, we've all seen people who got born again and then they tried to go back to the world and they were miserable. And they were wondering why, well... The world don't want me and the church don't want me. Well, the church don't want you because you act like the church, I mean the world, which is totally against what God said because God said he loves the world. He didn't say, I love Christians. He said, I love the world. So uh, if we teach our children the right way so that they... Uh, and, and, and I'm saying this because, you know, maybe you're older, you, you got grandchildren, maybe you, you, you know, don't have children or they're old, old, older, but you have nieces and nephews and little nieces and nephews. You can teach them at their, when they come and visit you or when you will have them, teach them the ways of God. Amen. You know, and, you know, you can always apologize. I don't care how old your kids get, you can always apologize to them. 
and say I was wrong, so let's, let's do this. <laughs> and let's, you know, this is the way for to go now. And help him, offer to help him out, if, you know, if any way possible. Dear man, you can't just offer to help. You have to question, give them questions or give them choices. And hopefully they'll make the right choice. But, you, you know, we, we have to make sure that we teach our children the ways of God. Um, and we can't trust other people to do it. Which means that you, I remember, I remember there, was pe there were family members we could not hang out with. Unless my mom or my dad was with us. They were, and you know, my mom and my dad was awesome. They had 12 kids in the home, so I don't know how they could. I don't know how they did what they, well, I know how they did it. They trusted God. <laughs> but they had 12 children, and um, I mean, it was 12 of us, of us in the home at the same time. And my mother did some, did these things that we're talking about now, just like my own butler did. You know, you just have to do them. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't do it. Amen. It was hard having that baby. But you did it. So we give up too easy. We got to fight for what we love. We can't let, just let somebody come in and say, well, such and such and such. That's why you, your mothers that are single, you cannot just run, jump up and just marry the first person to say they love you. Amen. You don't know how they feel about your kids. Amen. You don't know how your kids feel about them. Amen. You have to think about all that. You can't. As mothers, you cannot think about yourself anymore until that child is old enough to make their own decision. Amen. You really can't. Amen. You have to leave you totally up to God. Amen. And you know what's so awesome? He can do a better job than anybody you ever know. Because he knows you. You don't have to explain how you tick. You don't have to explain why I don't like that or why I don't like this. Not to God. He already knows. So when you completely trust him, he will take care of you. Because he wants you to take care of those that he gave you. Amen. And the world has us believing that. No, you got to look out for yourself. Look, you out there on your own. You're not on your own. You have a God on your side. Amen. You have the great I am on your side. Yes. He is not the great I, I was. He's the great I am. Yes. Amen. And he has your back. And besides that, now you got angels. Yeah. I'm about to embarrass my nephew, my great nephew. <laughs> Come here, Michael. <laughs> Come here, Michael. Now I just envision this. He had to get up here before they can. Come on, Michael. I got an angel behind me. <laughs> He is a real angel. You know, he's an angel. But well, I got an angel behind you. So not only is God behind me, I have an angel that follows me everywhere I go. Come on. <laughs> now, sometimes the angel won't go. Sometimes he'll just stand still because I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm not going where I'm supposed to be going. So he's... His, his, <laughs> his arms are pretty much tied until I get back over here. So then he, he follows me, he unfolds his arms. Because <laughs> he's ready to do battle for me. So not only, and it's, I've got more than one. And I probably could have brought his dad up here too, but he would have looked like he was too small. No. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That is not in my notes. <laughs> but that's God. You got that picture. You all have angels. And angels have been known to entertain you unaware. You've been talking to somebody and it was your angel. Or somebody else's angel. And you didn't even know it. And maybe he'll should tell you later on, that was your angel. I've, I've been blessed to be able to share with people that God, had, they told me stories and God said that was their angel. They saw their angel. You know. Um, and that's why people just froze. Or they look, you know if you've ever been in a place where people just staring at you, you don't know why. And our little minds start saying, uh, they, they don't like me or they racist. Or, they might have seen your angel. And they're just like, who is that? I ain't going to ask them. <laughs> Trust God. Because he is going to take care of us. Okay, let me get into this. The first one is love. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. I don't know how, when we got this little interpretation of God so loved America, or God so loved black people, or God so loved white people. God so loved the world. The world. He loves everybody. That's why he don't want you judging people. You're judging his creation. Yes. Do you really want to be held responsible for judging God's creation? Really? Yeah, they, they don't look like they're doing the right thing. You don't, they don't look like that's nothing you would do, but it's still, he still or she's still God's creation. We do that so much, much, much in our marriage. That, your husband... Is God's son. Your wife is God's daughter. What you fighting about? Why are you fighting each other? Why are you wrestling with each other when God says you're one? You're one. So now you know what that means? You got to figure out a way to get along. And there is a way. Sometimes, you know, at point, some point, Time we will compromise that this okay we're gonna do it your way this time. My time my term is the next time. <laughs> you do it and you do it until you finally get it right. Amen. And then you don't say, you know, if we do it his my husband's way and, and he was wrong, I don't say, see, I told you we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, you don't say that. You're one. You should be in agreement. We agreed to compromise. So now I said, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so a totally different thing. Now you're not. See, you can't just blame men because then they ain't going to do nothing else you say. And it's already hard that they do anything that you say. But you can get them to do what you would say. It's just how you say it. It's just the way you say it. And I remember, ooh, it was, I don't know how long, I just asked him how, you know, after one of those intense fellowship things, I asked him, how could I have said that better? Because he's the only one that can explain that to me. Amen. How he would have accepted it. Now, I am thank God I don't have to do it for all y'all men. I don't have to do it for him. So we need to look at the goodness of God. He's not telling you to make yourself fashionable or adaptable to every man out there. 
Make your, make your way adaptable to that man. Amen. So God is love. God is the source of love, which is why you need to teach your, your child about God. Because if you, got, if you have the love of God in your life and you see everybody is valuable and precious, then you've, you are so far ahead of everybody else. Ahead of everybody else. Because you, you, you know how to walk in love. And just the ability to walk in love is so many doors are open to you because of your ability to walk in love and show the God kind of love to people. Because we run into all kind of people out there. And most of them are unlovable. But see, the God kind of love is not based on how people love. It's based on how God loves. So how you respond to a person is not based on how they respond to you. Amen. It's based on how you respond to God. If you respond to God right, you'll be fine. Amen. If you cross God, then all the promises and things that he's, you've just pushed them further, all the promises that he's promised to you, you just pushed them further away from you because you want to do it your way. And your way is just going to get it further away from you. God's way is going to bring it close to you. It's going to bring to it. I'll bring it to you so you can enjoy all the things. So, and uh, you have to walk in love. Ephesians five, verse uh, chapter five, verse one and two tells us to walk in love. So when you when you introduce when you're introduced to God and He comes into your life. One of the first things after salvation that you receive is the ability to walk in love. Now, what we do is, no, I can't walk in love because so many things wrong have been done to me and all this, whatever. What we should be saying as Christians is, God, help me, teach me how to walk in love. Instead of, I can't, you can. If you could not do it, he wouldn't have told you to do it. Because he's that kind of God. He's not going to ask you to do anything that you don't have the ability to do. Amen. He, we were made, Genesis 1 tells us, we were made in God's image. Yes. Which means we were made to do what God does and, and to be what God is. He's love and he loves people. Amen. I believe, again, that Genesis 1 is God showing us how to control our own circumstances. We speak the word to that. Amen. We speak what we want to happen. And the more we speak it, the more we believe it. Yes. Amen. Yes. And the believing is the faith. So we speak what we want, not what we don't want. We don't speak necessarily what we see, unless what you see is what you want. You talk about, you know, for instance, let me give you an instance. I'm believing God for my eyes, but I'm going to tell you what my problem has been about my eyes. I keep saying, where are my glasses? I need my glasses. <laughs> so I, I have to find a different way to say that. Right? right. I may need my glasses. Where are my glasses? I ain't going to need this much longer. I'm not going to need them much longer. Amen. But I paid for them, so I'm going to use them right now. <laughs> that clock's moving fast. <laughs> Forgiveness. We want forgiveness for our parents, uh, for our kids. And, and we can say forgiveness, we can say mercy, because when it's people, we want them to give mercy. Okay, I know they did, but give them a little mercy. But when it's God, you want them to be forgiven. Amen. If you don't teach them how to ask for forgiveness, they won't be forgiven. Amen. If you don't teach them how to forgive others, the Bible tells them they won't, forgive, won't be forgiven. Because in order to receive God's forgiveness, you have to forgive others. 
And if you're sitting here with, with strife and just upset with people and uh, whatever, that's why you're not receiving what you, what you need. Because you're blocking it. Because of your unbelief or your disobedience. So you have to teach them how to um, forgive others. And you, you know what? One of the things that we as parents don't like to do is like to is ask our kids to forgive us. It's not right to ask your kids to forgive you. Yeah. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. If they see you doing it, they think they, can, they have the ability to do it too. Because kids will copy you. Yeah. Sometimes even when they ain't did nothing, yeah. they'll just say, oh, oh, forgive me. And you're like, forgive you for what? I don't know. You said it. <laughs> But kids will watch you. So the other thing is you have to be an example because they're going to watch you. You can't tell them to do something and then you don't do it. Amen. You know, because they're going to do what you do. Amen. Period. Just like when I, we told our kids, don't, you don't say a word that you've never heard before unless you've heard us say it first. You know, and uh, they were good at it. And then... I said something that I shouldn't have said. <laughs> and Michelle just went to town with it. <laughs> she said the other day, the other day when I, I told this story during women's con no, the women's conference, and she said the other day, she said, <laughs> um, I asked her, I said, does it embarrass you for me to tell that story? And she said, no. She said, it just, it just funny. it's funny because at first I was using a word in a sentence where it went, but then I was just saying it for any word. Any, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even make... She knew it didn't even make sense. She was just saying it. <laughs> and if y'all didn't hear the story, then y'all need to get the... the I'm not going to tell it this morning. Get the tape from the music women's meeting. <laughs> Get rid of all bitterness and strife because it affects your ability to walk in love. The other thing is that when you're mad at people, most of the time they don't even know. They don't even care. It's not even hurting them. It's hurting you. And you're mad at them. And they're like, for what? What did I do? That should tell you right there that you have taken it too far. Amen. Get over it. Ask God to forgive you for holding that unforgiveness in your heart. And it doesn't have to be, you know, if you can't find them, then you can't get forgiveness. Yes, you can. Ask God. God will forgive you. But it would help to find them if you can. But you don't have to. But it's your mother you do. Or your dad. Then the other thing we want for our kids is health. Amen. And we have to teach them, again, another reason why we have to teach God is to teach them to accept God as their God. It's because Jesus prayed to pay the price for our health. And we need to, we need to, um, we need to grab that and run with it. It's ours. And uh, years ago, the, uh, the Holy Spirit talked to me. When I was two, I had um, digestive. I don't know if I, it was a disease, whatever. I couldn't keep food down. So I was very sick. And um, so um, my parents took me to an ALM meeting, tent meeting, and I got healed. So a couple of years ago, the Lord spoke to me and he told me, he said, that anointing that went into your body, because you know, Tommy, you know that healing is anointing. Amen. That anointing that went into your body is still there. It is your responsibility to stir it up. Amen. Now, there's many ways to stir it up. My favorite way to stir it up is to pray in tongues. So when I feel, when I even feel like I'm not feeling well or something is, is trying to attack my body now, I just go and just start praying in tongues. 
I'm not, I'm not going to wait till I get to the church or wait till my husband gets back in the country or all that for... No, that's, that's a lot of unnecessary time Amen. that I waste not feeling well. Amen. So he spoke, he spoke to me and told me how to handle it so I can handle it. Amen. So I pray in tongues. The other, another thing you could do is you can, you know, the Bible tells us to word your testimony. Um, victory, the victory is the word of your testimony. So if you need victory in any area, start testifying what God has already done for you. That's your testimony. That's the testimony that's going to beat the devil. Because he's a fallen angel. He ain't Michael. He's not even on the earth legally. He's an illegal being. Imp. The Bible tells us that he fell from heaven so fast, it was like lightning. It was actually probably fast. It was faster than lightning, but that was what he, the scripture used to let us know because we thought we've all seen lightning of some sort. He fell that fast. He's still trying to get back up there. Why do we think he's powerful? He done tricked us. He done made us think that he had power. He don't have power. Amen. He don't have power. He just has a lease on the earth that Adam gave him, but he don't have the power. Because Jesus took that back and gave it to you. What you going to do with it? See, we're down to living and belief our privilege, privileges because we believe in what somebody done told us. Usually the devil. What you doing listening to him? What's he even doing on your shoulder? He's supposed to be under your feet. Peace. You want peace? Peace on the look, look chapter 2, verse 14. And a lot of people want to say, well, what, what is God's will? God spoke his will when he talked to the angels. And he, when he came to the shepherds and he said, peace on earth, good will towards man. His will has never changed. That's his will. Peace on earth, good will to men. We are the army that he has, that Jesus has appointed to go and take his peace and his good will and spread it on the earth. We can't do that when it's all about me. It's all about how I live my life. That's not what we're here. You, it'll be all about you once you get to heaven. But it's all about the world right now. He wants us to do our job. Jesus died and left, left all power and authority with his church. And if you're a member of the church, then you need to find out what your authority is and you need to get busy. Because the faster we get this peace and goodwill spread on the earth is the faster we can go to heaven where it's about us. And really it's not going to be about you in heaven. It's about the heavenly father. <laughs> but who cares? I'm in heaven. <laughs> so we, we want our kids to have peace. He talks about peace and goodwill. He talk, uh, John talks about uh, John 14, 7. Jesus says, peace I'll leave with you. Romans 5, 7 talks about peace f with God through Jesus Christ. And that's the peace you have with God. But you can have more than just peace with God. Peace with God is very important. Because if you don't have peace with God, then you cannot have the other peace. Amen. Success. And you know, there's other things I could talk about uh, strength, um, honor, 
humility, which is very important. You know, you don't bring your kids thinking about making them think that they're king and they're greater than anybody. No, you want them to be humble. Amen. You know, so you have to teach them to love other people. Amen. And then wisdom. But the last one I think I want to leave with you is um, honor. And that is honor all men. Uh, it's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, love your neighbor. And in Romans 12, 10, it talks about honor uh, and honor preferring one another. And see, all of this goes in line with what Bishop talked about today when we took communion, preferring or uh, discerning the Lord's body. You have to honor each other. It's just, just like if you have multiple children. You want your kids to respect each other. And you want your kids to honor each other. How do you think God feels? Why do you think God feels different than that? Why do you think God doesn't care? Why do you think you could just treat your, your fellow Christian any kind of way and not have, to answer the, not have to answer to God to that for it? You're going to have to answer to God. Each one of us have, will have our time before God. I want my time to be spent saying, I love you, Lord. I worship you. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to have to deal with all these little things or why I treated people the way I treated them because I thought I was too important. Yes, you may be important, but you're never too important. You can't just treat people any way you want to. You can't go out here and almost run a parking lot driver, a person over because you're in a hurry to get somewhere. Slow down. It'll be there when you get there. Especially nowadays, you can't, you can't, get, you can't give people the finger and stuff and because the way they were driving. These people are how crazy. They will take your peace and your life. You have to be an honorable person and you have to prefer each other. You know, sometimes, I don't even know if, if, if uh, I do it. I don't, uh, he does it too, but I don't even know if my husband realizes that now when we have an incident like that, we just smile. Not laugh. smile because if you laugh they think you're laughing at them Amen. now once we get outside we can laugh right. but you got to be wise Amen. you got to use some wisdom Amen. then I want to read um, I'm going to go back to John uh, 3.16 as I close but I'm going to re read it out the message bible I don't know if they have that if they can display that on screen and I'm going to use this right now since I paid for them. <laughs> I believe this is 3, 16 through 18. All right, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help. He came to put the world right. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that per person's failure to believe in the one of a kind, Son of God, when introduced to him. God loves you so much. You know, to give his only, only son, now he has many sons, but to give his only son, to go through what he went through on that cross, for me, for you, very hard to comprehend but he did it because he loves every single 
one of us. All of us. He loves us all the same. He has no respect of persons. You know, as a human person who invents somebody or birth somebody, when you look at your kids, you know, one of them might have been easier, but you don't have any favorites. You love them all. You love them evenly, the same way. You know, and you know, sometimes the one is, like I said, one might have been eas uh, easier to deal with, or one might be more like you, and the other think they're your favorite. But they're not. You're all my favorites. Amen. We're all God's favorites. Yes. The only time you don't reap that favorite status is when you disobey God. Every promise is a promise of God is connected to your obedience. Yes. If you forget everything else, remember that. Every promise of God is connected to your obedience. Not your mother's obedience. Not your husband or your wife's obedience. Not your children's obedience. It's connected to your obedience. Your obedience to God can change your life forever. It can make it better. A lot of you sitting here saying, well, we have a good life. It can be better which is why we need to examine ourselves daily because as I said when I started none of us is perfect Amen. all of us have a long way to go Amen. but we have a God who is patient and long suffering and loves us Amen. Amen. Amen every head bowed every eye closed in prayer praise God hallelujah every eye closed in prayer as Bishop comes to Hallelujah. Every head's bowed, please, and every eye's closed in prayer. There might be someone here who have now heard this today and said, God's loved me so much, and I'm done with turning him away. I'm willing to say yes to him. Let him come into my life today and make me a new person in Christ Jesus. And we want to give you that opportunity, whether you're doing it online, you're watching us online, or in this room. God loves you. He loves you unequivocally. Hallelujah. Might be someone here also, or watching me, who may say, I've known the Lord, but I've, I've walked away from him. I fell away from him. But I want to come back home. I realize that's where I belong. Well, the Bible says, says this about you in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It said that we will acknowledge our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, he's a good God. And he'll restore you and treat you as though sin has never been. Not only that, praise God, so it might be someone that says, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Can I be sure? The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, the scripture was written so that you can know that you have eternal life. And if you don't know that you know that you know, today's the day to know. Then there might be someone that says, I need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the physical evidence of speaking with tongues. It's available for every believer. There are many reasons why God wants you to pray in the spirit. You heard my wife talk about one of them. Praise the Lord. She prays in the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, there might be someone, whether you're online or here, who may say, you know, I want to become a, a part of a church whereby I can understand the word, receive it, and can use it in my life. Well, then Word of Faith is the right church for you, and we'll be honored, praise God, to receive you today, whether, praise God, is online membership or physically. So let's all stand in the congregation, please, while you're standing. Heads are bowed, please, and eyes are closed in prayer. As you stand, heads are bowed and eyes are closed in prayer. Amen. If you're here today and you would say, I would like one of those things for myself. I want to be born again today. Or I want to return home to the Lord today. Or, praise God, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. 
or I know oh, this is the right church home for me and I want to become part of that today. Any one of those things, you say, that's me. While heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And you say, Bishop, would you pray for me? Would you lift your hand high today? I'll be glad to pray that with and for you today. You can walk out of here born again, back in right, right relationship with God. I see a hand right there. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else says, that's me. Pray for me. God loves me so much. I'm willing to receive today. And don't allow that, that opportunity to pass you by. Anybody else says, that's me. Pray for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Let me put your hands down. Listen carefully. If you lifted your hand for prayer, or you didn't lift it, but you know really you should, amen, I want to pray with and for you right now. And I'm going to ask you to do something courageous. I'm going to ask you to gather your belongings, unless you have someone you trust to leave them with. I'm going to ask you to step out of the near aisle and come forward here to the area here of our prayer time. And let's pray right now. Come on, come, let's pray together. Come. That was such an awesome service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.